What's up everyone? Um, Magnify Pictures here for a 3ds Max tutorial. Alright, so I'm actually recording the beginning last because it turns out that my shortcut key to preview render is also the key to pause a recording and much of my the beginning of the uh, tutorial was uh, lost due to a pause in the recording. So. Um, Hopefully it all cuts together smoothly and I get everything covered. Uh, this is what we will be creating. A uh, nuke feel. Um, and there's some things uh, right away that I'm just going to, the sort of principles that I will be covering and I'll show you that in this video. Um, okay, so pan it up. Uh, the lighting in here we'll be covering, um, the shape and how this this rolls, we'll be covering that. Um, the stem is pretty basic, we'll be covering that of course. Um, and then if you look here, uh, especially visible right here, the phase, uh, how the uh, shape of the particle is animated, you can see that we'll be covering that. Alright, let's get started. Okay, um, start off, we're going to make a torus. Um, doesn't really matter the size, just make it somewhat thick. Um, I'll just make it 50 and 15. And I'm going to add a checker. Uh, material just so it's easier to see in the viewport and okay cool um, all right what causes this to roll is a principle called convection which is basically heat in here cooler out here uh, causes a a roll I uh, won't get into the science of it but um, it's really what sells an effect, uh, a nuke effect. Uh, how we do this is we're going to animate this this cool parameter here, uh, rotation. And as you see, if we move it up, it rolls kind of inward and it, it, move it to the negative, rolls outward. So we're going to animate this. Uh, do that, just turn on auto keying. Set the rotation to negative one. Scrub to the end. Set it to say negative 100. Um, one thing I forgot to do in my original recording was uh, Max. Let's turn off auto key. Max uh, has a good curve by default. Curve editor. Uh, it gradually starts rolling. Uh, you don't really want this, so we're gonna just drag these down. Uh, make this linear. Otherwise, you'll start. You'll have accelerating. I yeah, don't really want that. Doesn't really look all that realistic until you get to the end. Okay. Um, and if we just play this, you can see it's rolling out. You can adjust the speed uh, to your liking. And yeah, let's go ahead and add our particles in. Um, two ways of doing this. Uh, particle systems and uh, afterburn particles, the sticky particle. Uh, I like the particle systems, the uh, P flow better. I just feel like I have more control uh, whether or not I actually do. Um, but it's just, that's what I'm going to show you guys today. So let's open up particle view. Uh, right. Let's delete shape, rotation, and speed. And let's replace the position icon to position object and add our torus. And this just means our torus is going to emit particles. And if we scrub through, you can see that I mean, you start off with none, or up and then it just kind of sits there. Uh, right away, we want all of our particles to be already there. So set our birth and um, start and stop to zero. Let's maybe make this 
uh, since I'm doing this again, I know we made it about a thousand. And under position, we're going to want it to inherit emitter movement, lock on emitter, uh, and animate a shape. And now when we scroll through it, you can see the particles stick to it. Go on. Okay, and of course, we need to add a delete. This allows us to do, like I said before, transient animation, or just animation, I guess, like phase and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember what I did not cover in the beginning. Uh, okay. Okay. Now let's make a light. Uh, spotlight. Just make sure the whole thing is covered. I'll just pan around. And turn on shadows and make sure it's uh, an AB shadow. Whether it's AB ray tray shadow map. Doesn't really matter, it just depends on what version you have. Uh, this allows the volumetric shading. Let's go to rendering environment. Add an afterburn effect, and just add our uh, source particles and our our light. And if we take a render, you'll notice it'll just be white. Yeah, see, it doesn't really look like uh, as volume. Um, it's because we need to turn on shadow cast, shadow receive, and sub shadow. And when we render that. Bam. Got a nice volumetric effect. Alright, and I'm just going to turn on just so we can see the particles. Alright. Um, now, if we do. Move it a bit closer. Uh, if we do another render, let's take a look at it. Doesn't look quite right. Um, First of all, you can see the you can kind of see the uh, shape below it. Oh, that's okay. We'll take care of that later. Um, particles, the the particles kind of look a little weird, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, that's just the way the different kind of noise types you have. Uh, and if you go down to noise animation, go down uh, to type, and change it from FBM fractal to FBM turbulence. Uh, you get a different, a different. I, I like this noise type better. I think it's it's more cloud-like. Um, and you can even lower the noise size. That will give you kind of more resolution in each particle uh, if you want. Uh, I did to my other in the the end of this video. My original recording, I didn't change this. It, it's just what depends on what you want. Um, okay. Uh, now I am just going to add a to my torus. Add a uh, FFD. And you can animate this, uh, animate this getting taller over time. Um, I'm just going to bring it up. Just let people assume this nuke has gone off quite some time ago. Uh, and we can take one more render, just see how it looks. It's starting to look good. Probably add some more particles as you can see through there, but uh, I'm going to stop this rendering and I'm going to stop this recording and try to lace it together with my original recording. Alright?